you for patiently waiting um, while we are preparing, trying to get uh, our Bible study together tonight. Praise the Lord. Give God some praise. We thank God for um, another opportunity to be um, before him in his presence and an opportunity to be in your presence. Pray that everybody is having a good week thus far. Uh, all things are working together for the good of them that love God and, and, and who are called according to his purpose. Uh, what I'd like to do before I even get started tonight, though, I, I'm going to continue to talk a little bit, but I need you all to give us a thumbs up if, if you can hear the sound, if you can hear me pretty good. Let us know what we need to do. I know we've had some technical difficulties over the last um, service during last Sunday. And so I want to try to avoid that uh, going into Bible study. I want to make sure that we can get that fixed and corrected before we even get started, because I think everything that um, that that we're trying to teach and, 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 and preach, you know, here, we want to make sure that it's going out throughout the airways and that you're really getting a good reception <clears throat> of what God has intended for you to hear and uh, take on tonight. And so. If, you, if you're hearing us pretty good, uh, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that, um, you know, that you can hear us. Um, I, I know here in the sanctuary, um, the sound is good here, but this has nothing, this, this does not have the impact, <clears throat> excuse me, that you all will be hearing. And so you may hear me say, turn it down here in the house, but it's not for you because that's on a whole different signal that's coming out to you. And so... Um, just again, just want, wanting to make sure that you all can hear me and that we are getting a thumbs up before we get started in Bible study tonight. Make sure we got a thumbs up. Uh, had a good meeting tonight. We are, God is doing some wonderful things here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, man. I mean, God is about to open up some doors and we're just excited about what he's going to do. Uh, here in this community. I knew it, though. See, that's the thing, man. I knew God had called us here to do uh, what he's about to do. I don't know all the details. I don't know how he's going to do it. But what I do know is that he's going to do it. And so I'm, you know, I'm turning up my phone a little bit. It is a little low. Okay. I hear, I hear you. I see you, my brother. It's a little low. Sounds is a bit low. So I'm getting that. I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting. I appreciate that. We're trying to, trying to come up. So we're going to continue to work on that. Continue to work on that sound, and we can just. Oh, that sounds even better. Huh? That sounds good. It's getting better. You don't know what happened. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. If you don't know what you're doing, just keep on doing what you don't know what you're doing. Because what you don't know what you're doing seems to be working good. Huh? You going to go with that? All right. Carlos, give us a thumbs up, man. How's the sound? You are sound, man. Sitting back, chilling out tonight. So at least give us a thumbs up. What's going on? Can you hear us, Carlos? I see you watching. You good? Wonderful. All right, I'm going to cut my phone off. It sounds like we're doing pretty good tonight. Good, 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 good. Good, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, praise the Lord. Everybody that is joining us tonight, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Um, we thank the Lord for, the, again, an opportunity. As I was saying, man, we... Just over the last few days, God has done something great, you know, with this ministry. Um, and I just really see him about to really, man, I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, when I start telling you about it, remember I said that I was going to tell you about it. <laughs> I'm just excited about it. And so, I, and I know that we as a ministry, we're excited about what God's about to do in, in this community. And I'm not just saying that prophetically, like just saying and not knowing some stuff. I'm saying that some stuff that we've already said prophetically before is starting to come to pass. That's what I'm saying. Some of the things that we've always said, already said that God is going to do and use us, how he's going to use us, it's coming to pass. Doors are beginning to open, and we, we're seeing uh, the light of, of some of the things that he's about to reveal to us. 
And that's what revelation is. He's revealing, revealing uh, his purpose and plan for this, um, this ministry. Um, we, we, we said this before the doors were shut. We would always get together and we would say that we are, um, what we say about a small church, we are a growing, small growing church doing big things. Small growing church doing big things. And, and, the, and guess what? The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. <clears throat> and I will, you know, continue to share more as God continues to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And I'll begin to be ready to share with you guys. All right. So I think we got the sound together. I think we're okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Let's, um, let's go into prayer, and then we'll go into Bible study. Heavenly Father, you are the one and only one who has the power and authority uh, to render unto us life, and you also have the power to take it away. We thank you for today that we're living on this uh, side of the, uh, uh, of the earth today, God. We're living on top of the land and not under it today, Father. We thank you that today you've allowed us to uh, be used by you. We thank you that as we move forward tonight in the Bible study that you will give us understanding of your word, God, that you will dissect it for us. God, allow us to uh, choose, chew on it, muse on it, Father. Uh, let us do as you instructed um, Joshua to do, Father, to study your word and to, to, to study it and to concentrate on it and, and, and to go back and forth and memorize it, Lord. God, help us tonight that uh, your word will not be given to us in vain, but we will take it and use it for the uh, building of your church, your body, and Father, and for the lives of those that you've called in this season uh, to perfect your church. We thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do tonight. Father, I release my will in your hands. I just pray that you just use me to the best of, of your ability, which <laughs> exceeds anything we can even think of. Uh, so we thank you, Lord, that you're going to teach tonight, and that we're just going to be your students. We're going to be your di disciples tonight, God. Teach your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, bless the Lord. Last week, uh, we began to talk about um, going from the minors into the majors. And what I did last week is that I said that most of us as Christians, we have considered <clears throat> what we believe Christ considers major, we have made the majors minors. And Christ is, has come, and he's trying to get us to come back to understand, no, what he was teaching was the majors. But how we're living is that we're living allowing his majors to be our, our minors. Uh, and I use as an example some of the scriptures out of Matthew chapter 6 and chapter 7 where Jesus uh, begins teaching on the mount. And he begins, the, the, the Bible, it was chapter 5 begins talking about uh, the, the Beatitudes. And uh, let's go to Matthew. Maybe if you can get my, the, the sound. I, I just, no, we worked, you, you're doing okay. It was just uh, echo. I don't know, what, I guess it's just loud in here, but I don't want to touch it. Let's just leave it alone. Let's just leave it alone. As long as they're hearing, they're hearing, and we're good, and we'll continue to, to do this tonight. Um, I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. I just got to remember, don't get too excited. And so what I want to do, I want to go back to just some of the scriptures that I read in reference to what we look at as minors in our Christian walk. And really, these are not minors. These are majors. And what I said last week is that, we're chasing after what we think are majors. We're chasing after those things like trying to lay on, lay, lay, lay hands on people so that the sick can recover. And we're chasing after trying to prophesy. And we're chasing after trying to be so spiritual where we're learning all the Bible and all the Bible verses and we can spit out the scriptures because we're memorizing the scriptures. Um, but the Bible tells us that we have to be very careful that we don't have a zeal. But we, did, we, we got a zeal, but we don't have no power. And, and what Christ was trying to teach us is that the power comes from learning the, the majors, which is what Christ were teach, is teaching us, the majors. And um, 
but again, we've used that, we've used those majors and turned them into minors. And um, all those other things that I said, those are fine. Those are good things. Speaking in tongues, you know, being able to, to have the gift of healing and have the gift to prophesy. All that stuff is good. But I truly believe that there is a, 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 a level of perfection that you can reach when you go back to learning the, the, what, the, the I, I want to call them basics, just the basic things that we're supposed to, to, to be demonstrating out of our, our lives. And some of those basics are a love walk. And I got my notes here. These are some of the basics. In fact, let me read the note that I said last week. I said, the Lord is revealing to me that his church is losing their identity. The church, the body of believers, the church is losing their identity because we're focusing on things that we have classified as spiritual necessities or spiritual essentials and leaving behind lessons that are relative to everyday life in which are tied to our spiritual growth. So we're leaving behind these things that are tied to our spiritual growth. These things are really, these are really things that are relative to help increase those things that we consider spiritual essentials. And so I mentioned some of those things last week, and some of those things are, these are the things that we're leaving behind that we're not trying to perfect, but Christ wants us to perfect. These are some of the things. Um, our finances, financial management, um, uh, how we communicate one to another, and, and, and to strangers and to, to people, to, you know, to, how do we communicate? How do we express ourselves? How do we handle conflict resolutions, which are disagreements? How do we handle those things? Do we argue? Do we seek to compromise? Do we seek peace? Um, how do we respond to things when they don't go our way? How do we respond to disappointments and, and, and when our expectations are not met and when promises are broken? How do we res respond to those things? How do we, and I ta I've taught this last, over the last two Sundays, how do we apologize and how do we forgive? We talked about those things. We talked about um, uh, uh, one of the, the other things that, that, are, that we have considered minor, be, be, and I say minor because we don't put enough emphasis on these things, time management. Time management. God has given each and every one of us 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. And I know many of you, including myself, have said, man, there's not enough time in the day to accomplish all that I need to do. There's so much I need to do, and I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And the problem is not that we don't have enough time. The problem is that we fail to manage our time properly. God didn't make a mistake and, give, and gave us 24 hours. That's not a mistake. And, and, and now we're, we're saying, no, we need 25 hours. If God gave us 25 hours, we'll still be doing the same thing. Because it's not a, it's not a, it's not a matter of not having enough time. It's the problem is not managing the time that God, God has given us properly. And so that, again, becomes, it should be a major in our life and not a minor thing. You know, because we're, we're so, and, some, and, I'm not, and I, when I say we are so, I'm talking in general. Because some of you are good time man managers. And some of us are bad time managers. But for, in terms of the body of Christ and all of us getting together and we put an emphasis on time management and making that a, a major and no longer making it a minor, where our attitude, you know, towards time gets better. You know, we've been known, and I have to say it, as a, um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and if I offend someone, you know, hey, I'm not apologizing for it because you heard it too, that we as an African-American people, we have our own time clock. And, and when we're supposed to be somewhere at a certain time, you know, we're saying, you know, hey, the time is at 7 o'clock, but no, we're going to get there our time, which is 730, because we got our own time clock. No, that's not, that's not proper time management according to how God wants us to perfect time management. So that's time management. Then the other thing is how do we love? How do we express our love? How do we, how do we express it? And, and when we're talking about how do we express love, we're talking more so than, um, you know, oh, I love ice cream. I love cake. I love brownies. I love to go, you know, go to the movies. No, we're talking about the, the type of love that 
conquers all, the type of love that forgives, the type of love that um, uh, uh, covers a multitude of sins, uh, the type of love that's unconditional. So are we operating in that? No, we're not operating in that in terms of that being a major, because if that's a major, then we would seek after perfecting that type of walk. But for most of us, we don't perfect that type of walk. Most of us will say, well, I'm work in progress. You know, but we're work in progress, but what kind of progress are you making? What kind of progress are we making in that area? How much time are we spending to perfect that area in our lives? And then again, like I said, uh, financial management. And so over the next, I don't know, week or two, I'm, I'm going to be going over some of these minors. And we're going to get them to a place where they're majors in our lives. But I want to show you first why I believe that these are majors and not minors. And so let's go. Let's go to. Um, I want to go. Let's go back. I want to go to First Corinthians first. Paul made a point in First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one through three in the NIV version. First Corinthians chapter three in the NIV version. We're going to uh, read one through three. It says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as people who are still worldly, people who are still worldly, meaning that you're still doing things the world's way. You're still living on a standard that the world has taught us. So we're still loving on a way that the world has taught us. We're still uh, time, using time the way the world has taught us. We're still uh, learning or we're still basically forgiving the way the world taught us. We're still apologizing the way the world has taught us. We're still um, handling conflict the way the world has taught us. And on and on and on and on. And he goes on and says, but you, but, 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 but by, um, who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. Meaning that we, you, are not, you have not mastered the minors yet. We're still mere infants in Christ. He said, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. He said, I gave you milk. I gave you, I gave you some minor stuff so that you can begin to build on those minor things. He said, but I didn't give you not solid food. I didn't give you nothing hard. I didn't give you meat, anything like that. I didn't give you meat. He said, but, and you're still not ready to, to progress on to me. What is the meat? What is the spiritual meat? The spiritual meat, um, you got a mic, Mark Marshall. What, what, do you, what do you think Paul is talking about when he says here, he said, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. What is the solid food? What do you think he's talking about? I think he's talking about the, um, uh, just the bigger situations that can take place in life, um, the uh, bigger tests that we face. I believe the milk is maybe just the day-to-day -day living mm -hmm. and how we, um, you know, should stand out from one another, from the world. Amen. The meat, I believe, is when we really get into the things that we have to, um, that we are tempted with, and mm. he makes a way for us to escape to see whether or not we use that way to escape or do we just allow ourselves to be wow. tempted. That's what I think is the meat. That's good. That's good. Right. Absolutely. And that's what, that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, hey, you know, you, you're not even doing the basic stuff. You're not doing the basic stuff. You, I'm trying to get you to, to mature, I'm trying to get you to grow up. And then he goes on and says, not solid food for you. We're not yet ready for it. Then he goes on and he says, indeed, you are still not ready. Now, I don't even know how much time it requires for, for, for someone to get ready, but he said, you're still not ready. Then he goes on in verse 3, he says, you are still worldly. You're still worldly. You're still treating your brother and your sister wrong. You're still treating a, a stranger wrong. The Bible says this. He said, some have entertained angels unaware. When we deal with strangers, he said that there, sometimes we're dealing with strangers, and those strangers could be an angel, and that could be a test. God has sent a test by our way, and we, we treat that particular stranger um, in any old kind of way. And, and, and he, that particular stranger could have been an angel. And God is just sending uh, someone our way just to test our love walk, just to test our love walk. And then here we go. And then he goes on and he says, 
uh, you are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? He said, you're still arguing. You're still fighting. You're still doing the worldly things. You're still, basically, there's no difference between you and the world. That's really basically what, that's what Paul is saying. There's no difference between you and the world. And this is why this, this teaching is so important, because how do we know the difference between us and the world based on the way we live? It's based on how we carry ourselves. It's based on how we operate. It's based on how we treat people. That's how people know the difference. And so Christ touched on some of these things over here in Matthew. And, and let's pick up in Matthew chapter 5. And, and I like to, man, hey, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 31. And this is just some examples, guys. Matthew chapter 5, verse, thir, verse uh, 31 in the, in, uh, NL, uh, in the NLT version. It says, it has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And we'll stop right there. Now, th this is like another level that Christ is teaching. And he's saying, because this is what the world has taught us, is that we get into a marriage when we find out that our spouse don't cook like mama, or don't clean like mama, or don't have patience like somebody else you know, we ready to hop and get a divorce. And Christ is like, no, you, you got to stay there and work this thing out. And unless, you know, there's like adultery in the marriage, then you got to work this out. But because the world is saying, oh, man, it's easy to get a divorce. It's going, man, just, just get a divorce. Cut it off. Get a divorce. Cut it off. Get rid of her. Get rid of him. And, and, and there's no patience in the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the marriage. There's no one distributing patience. No one wants to work hard at the marriage. Nobody wants to go to uh, uh, marriage counseling. And Christ is, Christ is saying, no, you, you're supposed to work at it. That's just an example of us still being worldly. So let's jump over here to verse 38, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. It says, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Most of us would be like, no, nah, I ain't turning my cheek. I ain't doing that. that you crazy. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. Um. Uh, and continue, verse 41. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. You see, and, and, and then the, uh, verse 42 says, um, give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Man. And then let's go to 43. Give to the one who asks you, uh, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Come on. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Man, man. Verse 44, for 45, that you may be children of your father in heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Then let's go. Let's jump. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to keep on reading this. Yes. Right, because I would like to add that. Because what it is that you're saying, to me, is exemplifying uh, Christ. It's, 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 it's not doing just the, the bare minimum, right? It's setting the example. It's going above and beyond. Because these are the areas in our lives, really, these are the things that govern our everyday life. Right. And because 
this is where it, you you are really required to depend on the Holy Spirit. You're really called to depend on God. Whereas it's I'm not I'm not going to say for a lack of demeaning the gifts that God gives, but for someone to be able to again uh, come up and share a you know to as as a pastor for someone to get up and minister the word for someone on a Sunday to come up and speak in tongues for someone to get up on Sunday and you know prophesy to everybody in the in the house on on, on a given service mm -hmm. for some and and the word says that there will be false prophets there will mm -hmm. there will be those who are um acting or appearing as though they are godly but their motives are impure but these things right here that you're covering these right here that we are calling the minors these are the majors because right. if you are in a situation or get put in, in in a particular i'll go back to what the first one you mm -hmm. read uh as far as the divorce mm -hmm. even though it is said in scripture that if sexual immorality is the cause of your uh, the affliction or the offense in your marriage mm -hmm. yes you are able to divorce mm -hmm. you're able to do that mm -hmm. but at the same time those are the kinds of things not just doing the bare minimum but really availing ourselves to be um, used and to exemplify mercy and grace of, of who God really is right. and right. that that is that is to me the essence of the lesson is yes you can and and there's nothing wrong with the gifts I mean he set them in the body so right. that they right. could edify the body right. and to grow the body right. but it's, it's it's one thing to have the gift but to know that you are upset you leave home on the Sunday you upset with your whoever somebody in your family or there's art but then for you to come and say to really and, and to use your gift as though there is nothing wrong right and then what does that say to the person that because who may have came to in the same car with you to church that's right what is that saying you getting up there and this like they looking at you like i can't believe you up here that's right like it's nothing wrong like we didn't just call each other outside that's of our right. name that's and you right. up here laying on hand prophesying you don't right. let out so now you got sweet and sour coming out of your mouth wow. what where, what is wow. how can that be a testament to god that's right and so everything that you name is so essential that as christians and being mature and to me that is meat being on the meat of the word yeah that that is that is eating the meat being able to for love your enemies being mm -hmm. able to pray for those who despitefully use you though that's the meat of the word right that's good that, that's good a and yes and to you know break it down a little bit further mm -hmm. it's as if those things are accessories they should be the accessories mm -hmm. because uh, you're talking about the gifts the gifts yeah. yes they, yeah. they are accessories they accessorize us Wow. Because if Man. we're walking like Christ, they, you know, just like when you get dressed, you put on your clothes, but you want to go to another level or you want to add a splash to Come your clothing, then on. you put on some jewelry, Come you put on, on some makeup or something. Jesus. But now how we walk day to day, yes. then we want to take it to another level. That's when we pull out our gifts Jesus. to accessorize what wow. we're already doing. Mm -hmm. Because if mm -hmm. we're growing in that, in those majors, Man then the other things come automatically. Yes. Right. right, that's right. With power. Yeah, with, with power, power, with yes. power. And that's that's the point, man, that's good. What both of you are saying, man, as, as, if that is perfect. And that's exactly what it is. And we're, we're, we're trying to, it's like we're having the form, and you said this, I think, last week, uh, First Lady, we have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You remember the scripture like that? I forgot. Did I write that down? The, we have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I think I wrote it down on, on another piece of paper. And, and, that's, and that, that is what we're trying. We have to avoid that. 
We have to avoid having a form of godliness. 2 Timothy 5 and 3. I'm going to write it down this week. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, did we see? Was it was it uh, something? Did we go back up? Did we back up first before we read that? Second Timothy, you said five and three. No, baby. There's no five chapter in Timothy. First Timothy. Second Timothy three and five. Thank you, dear. Let's begin, and that's and that's where yeah we did back up. I want to I want to begin. Let's uh, let's begin with verse one and read read through five. What version are you in? That's good. And I'll be it's good. But mark this: there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Come on, boastful, proud. Abusive, disobedient to their parents, man. You got, man, is, is, is are we not seeing these things like really, really, really bad? Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, and without self-control. I mean, you shooting. They out there shooting people every week. We had the highest. What this past weekend in Columbus, Georgia, um, like major. Oh, my God, shooting incidents just over this past weekend. Self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with such people. So have nothing to do with such people. So Paul is trying to tell us, stay away from those type of people. Because those type of people, basically their lifestyle could become contagious. You find yourself wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in that type of lifestyle and thinking that it's okay. Mm -hmm. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Man, stay away from people like that. Godly, man. Ooh, they will act religious. And man, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We're acting religious. We're having, looking like the form of godliness. And we think that godliness is laying hands on somebody so people can say, ooh, look how spiritual he is. Ooh, look how spiritual she is. Prophesying, thus save the Lord. Ooh, he's spiritual. You know, praying for somebody. Oh, he can pray. And, and God is like, God is like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm bored watching y'all play in this game. God is like sitting back like, when are you all going to really become my people, which are called by my name? When are you all going to become a, a, a peculiar priesthood, a holy nation? When are you all going to become that type of people again? And God is like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this, these games. Right. And then we got this thing, oh, we're going to fake it till we make it. You're, we're doing that in church. Fake it till you make it where? Where are you going to make it to? You ain't make it in heaven. Where are you you going to fake it till you make it where? Till you make it to, 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 to Hades? First lady. And I think, you know, as there are some, and, and I guess it really just depends on how, how honest we are with ourselves, but. And then that's when the frustration sets in because we're looking at the works that we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're looking at um, what we think, uh, what seems to be full of power, but because there is no power with it, then we're wondering why, where are the results? Right. 
why why isn't why why isn't our ministry increasing? Wow. You know, why aren't people's lives, you know, <sighs> genuinely being changed? But it's because we're Man. we're denying the power. We're, we're not really majoring wow. in the minors. Right. Wow. Man. We're not majoring majoring in the minors. We're not making sure that we're not mm-hmm. bouncing chicks. Man. We're not making sure that we are not lying. We're right. not making sure that we are, you know, making sure that we're living peaceable with all men. Mm, mm, mm. Those are the kinds of things that um, are the those are the that those are the majors. Yes, yes. Go ahead, sis. Uh, my Bible is a um. I have like a study Bible, so mm-hmm. on the side the notes say um about Tim Second Timothy three and five. Uh huh. Concentrating on the on the externals of religion, mm. the worship forms and practices, memorizing religious trivia. Wow. Without really understanding the basics, it says. Man. So true godliness stems from a relationship with God and begins only when one submits to him. Son, wow, Jesus. and that's when, and, and that's talking about total submission. Yes. Total submission, and this is what we're saying that you know God is our Lord and our Savior. But the minute God tells us to do something, that he, or He has already instructed us to do something, we we refuse not to. Right. But yet we're saying that you know we're giving God total submission. You know, and we're and, and and let me say this that that submission or submitting to someone is basically is 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 not where you're losing who you are. Right. You're not losing who you are because you're you're being submissive. You're 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 really allowing God to um, uh, perfect the better of who you are or who you could be. You're, you're bettering that. He's perfecting that. When you submit yourself unto him, you allow him to, 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 to perfect who you really are. Man. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, so when we talked about that. And so now this is, some of the, this is one of the areas now. So this goes in line with what I taught over the last two Sundays, talking about apologizing and forgiving. And so hopefully you all had a chance to tune into that because, again, those are, those are majors, but we've turned those into minors. And I say we've turned them into minors because we don't apologize properly. We don't uh, uh, forgive properly. Uh, then the, one of the other thing was that um, let's talk about finances. Now, this is I want to talk about finances because, and we're probably going to have to continue this next week. Finances is one of those hard places that we have a hard time releasing our will over to God. When, when God says give, we have to think about it. This is something the Holy Ghost gave me tonight. I hope I'll pray, pray the Holy Spirit bring it back to my, my, my memory on how he gave it to me. That when we, um, if you have to be made to give, then you really are not operating in the characteristic of, of God. If you people say, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. People say, and they talk about people who, who love to give, they say, oh, that person got a gift in giving. Like, that person got a gift. That person loved to give. That's a gift. And the Holy Spirit told me tonight, Marcia, and said, that's not a gift to be to, to, be, to be able to give. That's not a gift. That's a characteristic of God to be able to give that. Why are we classifying that as a gift to give? All of us should have the characteristic to give. And the opposite of that is that anyone who does not love to give, that's a curse. If you don't love to give, then you're operating in a curse. Because all of us were created in his image and in his likeness. And God's image and God's likeness is a, he's a giving and loving God. He loves to give. So if you have to give, you have to be made to give, or you given, or you have to be pinpointed and say that you have a gift for giving. Giving is not a gift. Giving is a characteristic trait. Yes. But I think that in the Bible it does talk about 
the spirit of giving, it, it, that it is a gift. Is I that? I th and I think we probably, again, I think that's one of those areas where we have to um, make sure that we're not reading it out of its proper text. Because, and again, because it, uh, the Bible does not contradict itself. So if God is a loving God, a giving God, and, and one of God's attributes is giving, and even Paul says that God loves a cheerful giver. So if God loves a cheerful giver. You don't have to be a you don't have to have a gift for to be a giver. That should be that should be that should come out of your spirit because it, it is a it is a it is a it is a part of God's spirit to give. It is God's spirit. God's spirit is a giving loving spirit. So that that's not a gift. Now there is a gift of what we call maybe hospitality. It's where you take your giving to another level of giving. It's where now you, 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 you are you're operating in giving on another, on a higher level where you're the first one to, 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 to set up um, um, outreach. You know what I'm saying? You just, you love coming in and, 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 and it's like you're driven by it. You know, you're driven by this, 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 this thing of giving. You're driven by it. You wake up in the morning and you just, you, you driven. But any, but any saint shouldn't have to, we should not have to, any saint that comes to church, no one has to should prompt any saint to give. You shouldn't have to be prompted. You should not have to be, I should not have to give you, let me give you inspiration for giving. Shouldn't have to, I should, God should not have to prompt that. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And so when you're giving, you should give out of the abundance of just like, I think is what is it, 1 Corinthians chapter 9? Let's go there. 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 2nd, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me make sure I'm going right. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And again, this is basic stuff. And, and, and when, you, when someone has to convince you to give to the church, that, that goes, and it leads to you not having a full total understanding of kingdom living, God's, God's living. Um, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We going to get there. Okay, here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I want to begin at. Uh, verse 1, yeah. Okay, um, I want to interject something before yes. we move forward. So with, even with what you just said, because we do an offering to a message on mm -hmm. when Sundays. We, so we, we, this is the purpose of us doing it, and it's not a, it's a, it's, we say an offer to a message. We encourage people to give be, because there may be a lack of knowledge for those that don't understand why we give. And so our giving message should be catered around teaching why we give, not so much trying to uh, prompt people to give, but to teach them why we give. What was you going to say? Nothing. <laughs> you were going to say something. That's what we should, that's what, that's what our messages are. Giving messages should be, and, and then we should, when we give our offering, offertory encouraging message, we give an examples of why we give. We, we give an example of why, when we give to God, what God does and, and, and it's really based here on scripture. Okay, let's just um, first one. And the uh, yeah, NLT is good. I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. Now, the ministry of giving, this is the ministry of giving, meaning that now you have certain people that have to um, support the ministry in terms of it moving forward. And so this is a ministry of giving, meaning in order for us to do the will of God in the church, there has to be a, a ministry of giving. There has to be a, someone has to be willing to give in order for us to progress, in order for the lights to be on, in order for transportation to be made, for there to be food in, in my house. Um, there's a ministry of giving. And then he goes on and says, um, 
given for the believers in Jerusalem, verse 2, for I know how eager you are to help, and I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. They, they were enthused about doing it. They were enthused about doing it because they understand what the kingdom, what the church was about to do, what the church was doing, and that the church couldn't do it without proper funding. And we're in the same boat today. Here we are hundreds of years later. We're in the same boat. It's the same thing. The church exists based off of those that are willing to give, based off of those that are enthused about giving. Uh, Continue. But I am sending these brothers to be sure you really are ready, as I have been telling them, and that your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. We would be embarrassed not to to mention your own embarrassment if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. What happened was Paul said he got word that the Macedonians were ready to give, that they had taken up collection, whatever the case may be. Paul said, I'm sending somebody to come get it. And he's saying, I'm writing this letter because I don't want them to get there. And then come to find out you guys decided you changed your heart, you changed your mind. You spent the money. You gave it away. You did something other, other than what you said you were going to do. He says, so I'm writing this letter so you guys would be prepared because I've been bragging on you. And then uh, continue. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be willing, but I want it to be a willing gift, not one given grudgingly. Let me stop right there. Not one given grudgingly. The Lord taught me this a long time ago. If you have to be prompted and put, pushed and forced to give, that is not the type of giving that God wants to add credit to your, to, 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 to your life. Yeah, the money's going to be come, it's going to be collected, but you want to honor God in your giving. You want to be able to honor God in your giving, and you don't want to give it grudgingly. And this is why I'm going to teach, and I'm probably going to go into this next week, I'm going to teach about tithes which is a part of giving. It's still part of this lesson. And so next week, I'm going to teach on the tithe. I taught this lesson before, but now I have a larger audience, and I may even make some pastors and some preachers and some teachers, some folks out there, some religious folks, angry. But you know, don't get angry with me. You don't have to get angry with the word because I'm telling you I'm coming straight out of the Bible. But when we deal with giving and we're dealing with tithing, then you need to understand that God loves a cheerful giver. And so if you're forcing your, you, those in your ministry, you forcing them to give, then we're, we're contradicting the word of God. We should not have to force anybody to give, and that even includes tithing. And so we're going to talk about that because I know we like to use, um, what's the scripture, uh, uh, Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to be coming out of that. I'm going to be teaching out of Malachi next week. And we're going to break it down. We're going we're gonna to have a greater understanding. So when we walk away next, next Wednesday night, when we walk away next Wednesday night, you're going to have a better understanding about giving in the church, giving to the ministry, giving and just giving, period. But your mindset in terms of tithe and offering, we're going to talk about that because I know a lot of us, I say us because I don't want to pinpoint nobody and I don't want to point nobody out, but a lot of people that come to church, been coming to church on, the, on, on different boards and in, in different groups and in different settings and different praise teams, and you have a, you, you'll give everything else, but you won't give your money because you really believe somebody's trying to take something from you, and I'm going to teach you so that you have a better understanding, so by the time we finish this teaching, you ain't going to mind, you're not going to mind giving what they call tithes, you're not, you're not even going to mind giving it. Because you're not going to see tithing as it, as it what used to be, as, as you've been taught that. You're not going to see it like that anymore by the time we're, ta- we're, we're done next week. By the time we're done next week. Um, so, man, we got a few minutes left. I want to hit on this. We're still talking about giving. All right, so let's finish this, let's finish this, this scripture here. Uh, it will be willing to give, not one given grudgingly. Continue. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. 
but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Does that sound like, does that sound like tithing? You got to decide in your heart how much to give. Now, it doesn't sound like tithing because tithing tells you how much to give. Tithing says give 10%. So when you talk to tithe, you give 10%. No more, no less, you won't get 10%. That sounds like bondage to me. That sounds like bondage. And here, Paul is like saying, you got to decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Man. And verse 7. Verse 7, go back to 7. Huh? That, that, where's 7 at? There we go. No, that's 7. That's 8. Go back to 7. There we go. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Continue. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, okay? For God loves a person who gives cheerfully, okay? And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Is it more? As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor, the good deeds will be remembered forever. We're going to go all the way down to 11. Come on. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat in the same way he will provide and increase and increase your resources. There it is. And then pro, and pro, and produce and produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. They will thank God. And what God, and what God is saying that when you build up that, that minor and make it into a major, God will begin to do something in your heart, in your life. And he said that when you begin to do that, he said, man, you're going to, you're going to, man, you, he said, I'm going to start doing some stuff in your life because now you've taken what you used to consider a, a major, uh, what you can, what I consider, now you've taken what I consider a major and you made it your major and now you're mastering in the major. And he said, now because you're mastering in my major, he said, now watch what I do. And because you're talking about the benefits of giving, which now that's not here nor there, I'm saying, but I think we should continue to read 12 and 13 as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come in. Come on in. Let's go. Let's go with it. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. Man, as a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove, prove, prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. Come on now. This goes back to what we we're talking about as far as our demonstration of who we are in Christ and us having the, the attributes of God and doing the minors, what we what we've been operating in as minors and turning those minors into majors and watching what happened. This is how people will know that we are really godly people. Not because you, you can pray, but because you know a few scriptures. Only. Only. Not because you can do that. Only. But because now you know how to, you know how to love folks right. You know how to give right. You know how to express God right. And that's why that famous quote that, that you may have heard me say before, that what people said, uh, someone said this before, said that uh, everywhere you go, preach the gospel. Everywhere you go, preach the gospel. Everywhere you go, preach the good news. And every now and then, use words. Every now and then, use words. What does that mean? It means you are demonstrating the gospel. You're demonstrating Christianity out of your own lifestyle. 
your behaviors, your characteristics, how you treat people, the mind, the, those, those things that you've been operating in that's been minor, now you, they become major and people now see God. God said this, he said, through loving kindness have I drawn thee. Through loving kindness, by the way he loved us, he drew us unto him. What was that that drew us unto him? The way he loved us, the way he demonstrated himself to us, the way he forgave us, the way he taught us how to reconcile, the way he, he, he taught us how to love, the way he taught us how to, the way the, his grace and his mercy, all those things that we're failing to do that the first lady said are really basic life, consists of lifestyle stuff, stuff that the, I said the Holy Ghost gave me. Uh, leaving behind lessons that are relative to everyday life in which are tied to our spiritual growth. We're leaving behind those things. And those things are tied to our spiritual growth. Those things are tied to us becoming greater in terms of the gifts that God has put in his body and in his church. Man, we begin to operate in those areas, man, we're going to be really, really be be a reflection of, of Christ. Yeah, and I just had a, you know, just really a thought here. And what, cause, because one of the things I think that is so dangerous is because God is still so gracious and so merciful, right? And because he will still use us, he will still operate, you know, and use our gifts to bless others. Mm -hmm. So then it one can really um, tend to, if not careful, you'll, you'll be given over to a reprobate mind because you're thinking that because God is still operating through you, that you're okay. Right, you're okay. You, you feel like you're okay that you don't have to get it right with your neighbor. Right. That you can backbite and gossip because wow. every now and then, there is, he will trickle, there, there will be some type of manifestation because you are, you you are still anointed. Yes, it doesn't right. take away your anointing. Right. And so because of that, because we still see some type of increase, because we still see some type of presence of God, right. but you're still not operating in the fullness. The fullness. And that is where we want to be. We want to be fullness. operating in the fullness. That's what I'm trying to say. And yeah. so we, we have to be so careful because we, we will tend to think that we can continue to operate and do the things that we do without any kind of repercussions. But in actuality, we are really making, we're dragging out our the, the ultimate thing of what God really wants to do in our life. We're right. making, it's almost like making it a wilderness experience because mm -hmm. you may receive a blessing. He may keep your clothes right. new. He may not, your shoes may not. You're still looking on the part, right. but you're right. not operating in the fullness. On, we, we've got to, as Christians and as, as representatives of, of Christ, we've got to get it right. We've Dang. got to, and we're not talking about being perfect. Come on. But we're just Come talking on. about really having the heart and spirit of God. The heart and spirit of God. Yes, Marsha. And just to add to that, you know, mm, also, mm, mm. if you, if as Christians, if the focus is to have a better relationship with God, then when we get wrapped up in those things that First Lady was saying, he will reveal to us yes. those things where we're missing the mark. Yes. Yes. He will bring about, hey, right. well, you're operating your gift and you're praying and you over here, right. you're laying hands, but look look over here at home. Yes. Right. You just went off the handle or you yes. just lied or yes. you just did this. So he right. will reveal those things if we remember to keep before us his relationship, mm -hmm. growing in a relationship with him. That's, That's right. the key. I think. That is the key. That is absolutely the key. The key is growing in relationship with him. Yes. It is. It's, it's growing. And the other key is, and we talked about it earlier, is just being willing to be submissive. 
willing to be submissive, willing to allow God to, 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 to make us and to mold us, you know? And so that, that and that's, that, that's it, basically that. And, that, and, and, and to, uh, I mean, tonight we, we, we talked a lot, but tomorrow, I mean, next week, we're, we're going to go in a little bit deeper into, um, uh, into, these, into these things. But, ble- hey, man, bless you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us. I know we came in a few minutes late tonight, uh, but we're working on some technical things as well as working on some practical things as well as working on some relative things. We're working. We're working. We're working. Uh, bless you guys. I love you, man, so much. Anyone who wants to give their life to Christ tonight, you may do so uh, tonight. Uh, simple prayer. with Jesus Christ. Come on, pray with me. Father God, you know my life and you know how I've lived it. I ask you, Father, to come into my life and forgive me for my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. I know that he died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, He rose with all power in his hands. That power has saved me. Today, Father, I receive your gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, guys, we bless the Lord for you. If that was you out there and giving your life to Christ, we thank God for you. We want to hear from you. Please let us know what God is doing in your lives, man. We want to hear from you guys. Let us know, man, what, what, how this ministry may, may be impacting your life. Uh, if, the, if you're growing, we want to know. If, you, if there's some areas in your life that, that you want us to touch on during Bible study, send that out there, man. This is, man, hey, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. However, the Lord, and I say this every Sunday, how, we're doing it God's way. However, God leads us to do it, man. We just want to do it God's way. And God's way, I'm sure, is to make sure that you are complete in him. Making sure that he's feeding you everything you need to grow up in him, to be successful in the walk that he has set before you. Bless you guys so much. We love you. Hey, I'm Pastor T, man. We have our wonderful sister, Sister Marsha, who's here with us tonight. Thank God for you, Sister Marsha. Thank you for coming down. First Lady is here, um, our administrative uh, pastor, and we thank God for her tonight. We bless you guys so much. Hey, I'm Pastor T with the Bridge Church here in, in, in Alabama. Uh, the British Church of Alabama. We love you guys as we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. And until the next time, hopefully that will be Sunday. We'll be here. And uh, hey, man, get, get ready because God's got another word. Sunday, Father's Day, right? Father's Day, man. Hey, man, guys, talk to your friends. Talk to your brothers. Your, talk to your fathers, your uncles, nephews, whatever, your friends. Get them to watch this service on Sunday. The Lord's going to bless them. Well, I want to talk to the men. I gave the women a good message on Mother's Day. Now I'm going to bless the men on this particular Father's Day. All right? Love you guys. Until the next time, I'm Pastor T. Guess what? I'm out. <laughs> I love you, man. God bless you.